Keep on going, pressing onward in His strength. Never your own. You are weak. He is mighty. He is with you. You're not alone. Your addictions no longer rule you. You may stumble, but Christ is King. Child of God, Child of God. What a wonderful song by a wonderful group of people. You know, welcome. Welcome to all as we celebrate the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's my pleasure to welcome all the brothers and sisters of Central Community Church of God and you visitors as well. That Just welcome here to our church here in Hanford, California and our online service. My name is Malcolm Bullock and I'm so blessed and honored to be called upon to be pastor of this loving congregation. We want to thank everyone all of you for taking time out of their, your days to, to give praise and, and to the Lord for continuing to bless their lives day in and day out. Your sacrifices have allowed you to be fruitful and abundant. We would also like to extend a warm welcome to any newcomers and those that are watching online. We really would. And, and the Lord has brought you here as a stranger. But our prayers, that you, our prayers are that you will be sure to lead as a part of this family, this family of God. So please join me now as we pray. Dear ever-loving God, with your power, Lord, there's nothing that's impossible. With spirits raised and hearts trusting, we're grateful for your promise that when two or 
two or more gathered, you are there amongst us. Lord, we, we thank you for the opportunity to gather in your holy presence once more. And oh Lord, we ask that you would bless our worship service this morning. We pray that you would help us to serve, just to have a yearning heart and open ears so that we may thirst for your word and manifest, manifest your glory today. And Lord, may you fill us with wisdom to understand your will. And after this service, may you help make us instruments of your greater purpose. And these we ask in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm going to play a song before I talk about it. I'm going to talk about the song a little bit later. And I'm sure a lot of you if, uh, have heard of the song, and you probably may have even seen the movie, I Can Only Imagine. But we're going to play it, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that right after the song. So sing, join us now as we sing, I Can Only Imagine.
Such a great song, such a great song. Um, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 7 says this, For then the dust will return to the earth, and the Spirit will return to God who gave it. You know, I settled into the church pew. I'm going to read you a story, actually. I'll, I'll read it like this. I'm going to read you a story, and then you follow along with me. It goes like this. I settled into the church pew behind a woman as the worship team began playing. I can only imagine. Raising my hands, I praise God as the woman's sweet soprano voice harmonized with mine. After telling me about her health struggles, we decided to pray together during her upcoming cancer treatments. And a few months later, Louise told me she feared, she feared dying. And leaning onto her hospital bed, I rested my head next to hers, whispered a prayer, and quietly sang our song. I can only imagine what it was like for Louise when she worshipped Jesus face to face just a few days later. See, the Apostle Paul comforts, offers comfort, assure, comforting assurance to his readers who are facing death. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 1, he says, For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is when we die and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven. An eternal body made for us by God himself and not by human hands. See, the suffering experienced on this side of eternity may cause groaning. It might cause groaning. In fact, I'm sure it will. But our hope remains anchored to our heavenly dwelling, our eternal existence with Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, verses 2 through 4 says, We grow weary in our present bodies and we long to put on our heavenly bodies like new clothing. For we will put on heavenly bodies. We will not be spirits without bodies. While we live in these earthly bodies, we groan and sigh. But it's not that we want to die and get rid of these bodies that clothe us. Rather, we want to put on new bodies so that these dying bodies will be swallowed up by life. Man. See, though God designed us to yearn for everlasting life with Him, it goes on in 2 Corinthians 5, verses 5 and 6, it says, God Himself prepared us for this. And as a guarantee, He has given us His Holy Spirit. So we are always confident, even though we know that as long as we live in these bodies, we are not at home with the Lord. His promises are meant to impact the way we live for Him now. And He explains this in the next three verse, four verses. He says, For we live by believing and not by seeing. Yes, we are fully confident that we would rather be away from these earthly bodies, for then we will be at home with the Lord. So whether we are here in this body or are away from this body, our goal is to please Him. For we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will, be, we will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done in this earthly body. We're talking about this today in our, many of our messages and through the, through the uh, Beatitudes. See, as we live to please Jesus while waiting for Him to return or call us home, we can rejoice in the peace of His constant presence. What we will experience the moment we leave our earthly bodies and join Jesus in eternity. What will, we, what will happen? We can only imagine. We can only imagine. Let's pray. Father God, we can only imagine the things that we have to look forward to to that time when we are with you. Lord, we can only imagine things that have gone on before and things that are there with you now. Our prayer, Lord, as we are here on this earthly home, to continue in the goodness and the obedience to you so that we too can be standing there beside you in that heavenly, in that heavenly kingdom. This is our prayer, Lord. We can only imagine these things now. But Lord, the imagination the wonder of it all, the beauty of it all, the joy that it brings us, Lord. We thank you for that. We thank you for, for sending your Son so that this is something that is not just in the imagination, but it's a reality to come true for eternity. For that, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin Lost without hope with no place to begin Your love made a way to let mercy come in When death was arrested and my life began Ash was redeemed, only beauty remains And my orphan heart was given a name My morning grew quiet, my feet rose to dance When death was arrested and my life began Oh, your grace, so free Washes over me You have made me new Now life begins with you It's your endless love Pouring down on us You have made us new Release from my chains, I'm a prisoner no more My shame was a ransom he faithfully bore He canceled my debt and he called me his friend When death was arrested and my life began Oh, oh your grace so Washes over me You have made me new Now life begins with you It's your endless love Pouring down on us You have made us new Our Savior displayed on a criminal's cross And darkness rejoiced as though heaven had lost But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand Oh, that's when death was arrested and my life began My life began yes. Oh, your grace So free Washes over me You have made me new Now life begins with you And it's your love It's your endless love Pouring down Hey folks, welcome back to our message for this week. 
still going in through the Beatitudes. And we're going to, this week, we're going to talk about showing mercy. Showing mercies, you know, with hurts and habits and hang-ups that we all go through. Isn't it good to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ? We were talking earlier about, I can only imagine, this is the thing that, that he brings us. This, this time of, of glory that, that, is, that is available for all of us. And this is why it's so good to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen? It's good to be in the house of the Lord. We welcome you here within our worship center. We welcome you here for all of you watching online this morning or whatever time it is you're watching. And we welcome you. We do welcome you. You know, we used to sing a song many years ago called The Deep, Deep, Unconditional Love of Jesus that comes into our hearts and changes us and gives us a new heart and and a new position. We give praise and worship to Jesus Christ. There's a fellow named Ed Stetzer. He's a preacher. He's a pastor. He's a He's a college professor. He has a saying that I've grown fond of. He says, when, peop- when God's people gather together, we need to make much of Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? That's really wonderful. And you think, well, why? Why? Because, because Jesus came and he saves us. I'll go back to that little devotional before where we can only imagine what awaits us. He's our answer for the hurts that each of us has, the habits that each of us have, and the hang-ups that we all have in our lives. Jesus came and gives us life. I don't know about you, but man, that just brings me such joy. It really brings me such joy. You know, my devotional time this morning, early in the morning, my devotional God gave me some prompt words. Words that would prompt me on things to think about and to pray about. One of those words was joy. When I was talking about, I can only imagine the joy that that will bring and the joy it brings me now. I prayed, Lord, just give us joy this morning as we come before you. All of us have challenges, right? All of us have difficulties. All of us have questions. All of us have hang-ups in our lives. Some of our hurts, some of our habits have been around for a very long time. Some of them keep tripping us up over and over again. We've been talking about how to get past some of those things the past few weeks. In fact, in the last four weeks, we talked about how it begins by understanding our relationship with God. We've been looking at the Beatitudes, which is the first part of Matthew 5 of Jesus' Mount, the uh, Mount, famous Sermon on the Mount. Eight qualities that can help us get past these hurts, these habits, these hang-ups in our lives that keep tripping us up. They keep messing with us. And this can summarize the first four. When we come to the place where we surrender absolutely everything in our lives to Jesus, we say, Lord, Lord, I lay it all down to you. Then we'll be able, when we say that, then we'll be able to make a good start in getting past those things. When we recognize that it all belongs to God, and we surrender everything to Him, surrender everything to Him, You know, the second four Beatitudes have then to deal with how we treat one another. Kind of as a kind of a result of the first four of our surrender to God. Jesus says, and this is how we go on to live once we surrender to God. Now, this is how you go on to live. Matthew, the fifth Beatitude is this. Matthew 5, 7 says, blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. So after we come to the first four uh, uh, Matthew 5, 3 through 6, it says, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, righteousness, for they will be filled. And now it's Matthew 5, 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Remember, blessed means God blesses those. God blesses those who are merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Let's talk a little bit about what that word mercy even means. For one thing, mercy is not normal, folks. It's not normal, right? I mean, when someone wrongs you, when someone hurts you, when someone deliberately does something against you, your first thought in mind is not, well, I want to extend mercy. Is it? No, I think it's just the opposite. We we seek revenge. We want to strike back, don't we? 
We want to hurt them like they hurt us. We want to cause at least as much pain in them as they caused in us. When, and view, very few of us initially think, oh, I just want to extend mercy to them when they hurt us. In Leviticus, it says this, and most of you have heard it before, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It actually says this, Leviticus 24, verses 19 through 20. It says, anyone who injures their neighbor is to be injured in the same manner. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. The one who has inflicted the injury must suffer the same injury. Whoever injures another person must receive the same injury in return, it says. We read those words and we think, wow, I guess God is affirming that we're to strike back. We're to do an eye for an eye. A little deeper reading, a little more context of what's happening here is really important, guys. Remember, Leviticus is written to a group of people who have been enslaved for 40 years. God is creating a new community here, a new nation, and he's telling them, He's telling these guys, as my followers, this is how you need to respond. This is what it looks like to follow me. Because here's what would happen, and I think it happens all through human nature, and it happens today. When someone strikes back at you, or when someone strikes at you and hurts you, we strike back, don't we, with sometimes, most of the time, with greater vengeance. Because we're not, we're not just striking back as, as getting back at them. We're angry now, and we're hurt. So what God is telling his people, very primitive people, who he's just forming, he says, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. At least as followers, at, at least as followers of mine, here's where we begin. Limit your retaliation. Now Jesus, now hang on now, listen to me. Jesus is going to come along and the rest of the scripture is going to come along and he's going to raise that bar of mercy even more. Okay. But in the beginning, God himself is establishing his people. He says, put a grip, get a grip, catch a hold, and don't strike back. Do not strike back. So Jesus comes along and he says, wow, you know what we need to do? We need to extend mercy to them. We need to be merciful. See, we are most like Christ when we show mercy. Jesus says it in Luke uh, 6.36. He says, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. If you read any part of Scripture at all, you'll find all through the Old and especially the New Testament, God is full of compassion, He's full of mercy, and He's full of grace, folks. Jesus says we're to be like Him. We're to be merciful. We're to extend mercy to those who have wronged us just as your Heavenly Father extends mercy to you. To you. John Stott is a 20th century pastor and a teacher in England. And he said this, No comment could be or maybe should be more hurtful to the Christian than these words. But you're no different than anybody else. You Christians are no different than anybody else. You think if somebody says that, that should be very hurtful to a Christian. Doesn't that sting a little bit? You're no different. If we're no different, if our response when we've been struck is no different than anybody else, that should really hurt us to our core. See, remember the first four Beatitudes. If we come to Christ, we recognize our sin before Him. We're mourning for that sin. We hunger and thirst to be more and more like Him, more righteous like Him. And if we're not, then something's wrong. We've got to go back to the beginning because we're not ready. John Stott says that the comment should cut us to the very core because we are to show and extend mercy to our brothers and sisters even when they don't deserve it. See, mercy is not normal. God's mercy, God's grace is anything but normal. So what else does that look like? Mercy is not normal, but also, folks, also when Jesus uses the word mercy, it's more like just, well, okay, I forgive you. But it's more than just forgiveness. It's more than just, okay, I'll ignore it. I won't strike back. No. Mercy is more than that. Mercy requires action, folks. Mercy requires action. It's more than a feeling. Mercy moves us to action, or it should. In Matthew 14, we see all these verses throughout the New Testament uh, through Jesus when he says he saw the huge crowd when he stepped from the boat and he had what? When he stepped from that boat and he had what? He had compassion. It says this in Matthew 14, verses 13 to 14. It says this, When Jesus heard what had happened, he withdrew by boat privately to a solitary place. 
Hearing of this, the crowds followed him on foot from the towns. And when Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Compassion. Folks, compassion. That's another word for mercy. He had compassion. He had mercy on them. He healed their sick. Now, interesting enough, in Hebrew, the word for <clears throat> excuse me, the word for mercy here is follow me. Now, this is <clears throat> oh my goodness, this is pretty interesting. It has this idea. That mercy has this this idea of being a deep seated ache. That you're so merciful that you begin to ache for somebody else, and we may call it this way. You begin to to walk a mile in their shoes. You begin to kind of live their life. You begin to understand really deep down how they are feeling. And now this is really interesting. You're going to learn something today about that word mercy in Hebrew. Actually, to the Hebrew word that to the Hebrew people, that word was what they what they felt that mo- the emotion deep down in their gut. They just felt it. The word just down in their bowels. That's where they felt the emotion. That there's a Greek. Greek ver- uh, there's a verb form of the Greek uh, word for bowels, and it means it means most basically to be to be moved to one's bowels. But the King James version translates it more idiomatically as moved with compassion. The word is used only in the Gospels and only to describe the emotional life of Jesus Christ. The emotional life. The King James version talks about how Jesus' bowels were full of compassion. It says this in Matthew fourteen fourteen. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. And he healed their sick. Moved with compassion. Down in your gut to where it changes not only the way you feel, but the, but the way you act. You have to do something. Jesus was moved with such mercy that he felt it and it caused him to be, caused him to be merciful. I have to. I have to. When we receive mercy, we can feel that compassion of Christ. We can feel it when we receive mercy. That's why when we turn, when we accept Jesus Christ, and when we recognize that He's merciful to us, doesn't it affect you in your gut? It should. It sure does. It sure does. Because that's where mercy comes from, deep down inside. Jesus is saying, hey, you need to do more than just extend words of mercy, but actions of mercy as well. That's how Jesus lived his life. And we, as his followers, are to live the same way. We need to live with that kind of feeling in our hearts. And so I pose this question to all of you watching right now. What would it look like? Imagine, for example, if you're listening online especially, what would it look like with your family, your neighborhood, or your workplace, or here? What would it look like if we cared so much for each other that we we absolutely ached for them and hurt for them? That we cared so much for one another that our hearts ached for them. Our compassion would cause us to put our needs aside and we begin to reach out to those who are hurting. What would that look like? What would that look like? What would that feel like? How would that change our course of action? Rather than striking back, which we're so wont to do these days. Rather than being ordinary, or as we spoke about last week, rather than being average, We just went out and did something different than the world. We cared so much and we ached so much for our brothers and sisters, even if they hurt us, that we wanted to reach out in goodness and love and compassion and mercy and grace to them. When Jesus says, blessed are the merciful, that's what He's talking about. When He says, blessed are the merciful, blessed are those who ache for their brothers and sisters. Blessed are those who have compassion, who ache in their very core for, of who they are for their sis- brothers and sisters, for their need. It moves me just by talking about this. The ache is so big, it's so great. It moves me to want to do something. moves me to action. I just can't stay quiet about this. It's something that really, it really sits with me. I just can't stay uninvolved. I have to do something. Have you ever felt like that? Where you have to move, you have to do something? When you see somebody hurting? Even if they've hurt you? That's mercy. That's mercy. Remember this. No one deserves mercy. Right? No one deserves mercy. 
No one deserves grace. The very definition of mercy is that no one deserves it. No one deserves it. It's the very fact that we seek mercy that we don't deserve it, that we are given it. Because, folks, mercy is a gift. It's a gift of God. Mercy is what God gives us. Mercy is what, when we're following Jesus, we give to one another. Mercy is what attracts us to Jesus. We say this part often around here, and I think we would all agree that all of us are, are messed up people, right? Jesus' mercy is what attracts us to Him. I'm not attracted to Jesus because I'm good enough to, because I have value. I'm attracted to Jesus because I know I'm a sinner. Yeah, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I've fallen short. short. But I know also that Jesus is merciful to one like me. Jesus is merciful to me. You want to hear something interesting about that word mercy as well? And this is pretty cool. God, God's Word tells us that Jesus delights in showing mercy. In showing mercy. Isn't that, I mean, isn't that cool? Think about it. I mean, it's part of who Jesus is. He delights, it says. He delights. It brings Him joy in showing us mercy. There are a few verses about mercy that I've tagged, just a few of them. There are over 260-some verses throughout Scripture about God's mercy. So I'm not going to read, obviously, all 260. We could be here for a few days. I'm only going to read a couple of them. This one is from Isaiah. Isaiah 30, verse 18. It says, Yet the Lord longs to be gracious to you, therefore He will rise up to show you compassion, mercy. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all who wait for Him. So the Lord must wait for you to come to Him so He can show you His love, compassion, and mercy. See, He waits for us to come to Him. What is He waiting for? Well, it's those first four Beatitudes we talked about. He's waiting for us to come with those empty hands. He's waiting for us to admit our dependency upon Him. He's waiting for us to sorrow over our sin. He's waiting for us to hunger and thirst for righteousness. You have to go through it step by step and follow them. But when we come, the Lord is faithful, and He will bless those. He will extend mercy on those who wait for His help, for He is a kind and compassionate God. The prophet Joel says this in Joel 2, 2 uh, 12, 14, through 12, 14. It says, Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for He is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows, he may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing. Grain offerings and drink offerings for the, Lord your, for the Lord your God. I mean, is that crazy or not? Think about it. Is that attractive or what? To know that I can come with all my stuff, all my baggage, all my sin, all of my shame, all of my guilt, and I can come to God, and he doesn't shake a fist at me. He has said, Malcolm, what are you doing? Get away from here. He doesn't say, no, 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 you got to do better. He extends mercy and grace to me, and more importantly, he delights in doing it. It brings him joy. The Hebrew writer says this, he says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. Come boldly to the throne. There we will receive his mercy and, find, and, find, and we find grace to help us. When? Well, when we need it most. When we need it most. God's mercy is so much bigger than your mess-ups and my mess-ups and my hang-ups and your habits and your hurts and your hang-ups. God's mercy is so much greater, so much bigger than all of that. It's what pulls us and attracts us to Jesus. We recognize that we need to be someone. We recognize that we need someone just to be merciful to us. And God delights in it. He just wants us to come and be honest with Him. To be honest with ourselves, really. When we show mercy, when, we will receive mercy when we respond that way because it's the gift of God. You, don't, you do not stay angry forever, God says. He continues to give us mercy. And a cool part is this. He extends mercy. Maybe He extends mercy. Maybe if I put it like this. Have you ever messed up again and again and again? And again, ever done that? Ever had that problem that just keeps recurring? It's like a cycle. 
It just keeps going on and on and on. You wonder, man, why can't I just get past this? And you know what this Word tells us? He delights in showing us mercy over and over and over and over again. Don't you think that's pretty, atta- uh, pretty attractive? I do. You think that, that that is a God that you want to follow? Is that a Savior that you need? It's, it's a Savior. I tell you folks, it's a Savior that I need in my life. And now here's what Jesus tells us. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Now let's do a little digging here. Here's what Jesus is not saying. Jesus is not saying that being merciful is a way for us to earn mercy. Or we're merciful, or we're merciful because we we want to receive the mercy of God. No, 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 no. The beatitude already assumes that you have received God's mercy. You see? The beatitude already assumes. Remember who Jesus is talking to. He's talking to his disciples, although many people are listening, but his primary audience is his disciples, not just the 12, but about 120 or so. Those are his disciples. Remember, disciples didn't start large, and they grew as Jesus began to teach more and more and more. But now there's just more than just a few. Okay? It's who Jesus is primarily teaching, and they're already received, they've already received God's mercy. So Jesus is saying about merciful, being merciful is not a way to receive more mercy. No. It's simply a response to a gift that we've already received. Mercy is our, is our response to having received mercy. Jesus can't figure this out. For example, Jesus would say this in, my, in our English. He would say, how could you not be merciful after you receive such mercy? I mean, if you receive the mercy of God, okay, if you've, if you've been forgiven, if you've been set apart and received God's grace, Jesus would say, I just can't figure out how you could not be merciful. How can you not be merciful? So folks, the conclusion is this. If you don't treat others with mercy, I think it might be fair to say maybe you've never received God's mercy. Maybe you think that you have, but maybe you never really internalize it. Because I don't think Jesus can figure this out. How could you possibly not be merciful if you received God's mercy? See, once I was away from God, once, oh my gosh, for 40 years, my life was full of sin. But now because of God's mercy, because of His unconditional love, because of His amazing grace, He has changed my heart and now I'm a new person, I'm a new creation. Brother Randy, you know what I'm talking about. How can I be anything else but merciful? How could I? You see, I receive mercy from God, so then I show mercy to others. And here's the cool part. As I show mercy, then God gives me more mercy. And here's what we have to get past, though. We have to get past that desire to always want to strike back. And that's the hard part, folks. I agree, it's the hard part. Because that desire isn't normal. That's where we want, that's where we have to depend on the Holy Spirit. That's where we have to depend on God to help us move past that. Until we come to the point where we can, and all through Scripture you'll see Jesus saying this, where we can leave the revenge, leave the payback to God. Leave it to God, folks. You ever been walking down a road someplace, or you're maybe driving a car someplace, and maybe you do something that's an accident or whatever? And you just get a nasty response from somebody. You ever had a nasty response? I'm sure you have. I was walking to a movie one time. I can't tell you because my mind will not let me say those words. I'd forgotten what I did, but the guy who yelled at me did not yell nice things. He yelled some pretty nasty things, referring to, well, a variety of things he thought was appropriate at the time. And I can tell you at that moment, at that, and, and that evening, my first thought was not, well, God bless you. You know what? That's just, well, thank you so much for those words. That wasn't my initial thought. And perhaps it wouldn't be your initial thought either. You know, I've had more than my share of occasions where I wanted to strike back or have said things that probably have not been good or have been righteous and anything or everything but good. That's just what's normal. That's us. That's who we are. What Jesus is telling us is that when we surrender our heart to Jesus Christ, Galatians says that when we live by the Spirit, 
we would then have victory over the evil desires of our heart. Galatians 5, 22 through 25 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. But not until we do that, because it's just natural for us, and that's why we struggle here. Jesus understands that. Jesus says, as you sow mercy to others, God will give you more mercy in return. James 2.13 says this. He says this. There will be no mercy for those who have, not been shown, who have not shown mercy to others. But if you have been merciful, God will be merciful when He judges you. Why? So, so you can show more mercy. You see how that works? God is the author. God is the author. He's the beginning point. Beginning point sorry. He extends mercy to us. True mercy genuine mercy we accept that mercy and now because of our gratitude our gratefulness we want to be merciful to other people as we are we don't strike back when that person says those nasty things about my family we don't strike back because we want to respond differently as we act because of our feelings of mercy then God gives us mercy mercy is a gift folks mercy is a gift that God gives us and allows us to be merciful to others all of you know this. All of you understand this online, that are watching online as well. Here's, what I'm, here's why I'm saying mercy is so important. Because none of us truly understand what's taking place in that person's life that's offended us. We don't know. No one understands. Maybe they're just a grumpy person. Maybe they're just a, a nasty person. Maybe that's just who they are. Well, you can say a prayer for them. You can say a prayer for them. Or maybe something else is taking place in their lives. Maybe something else is occurring that we have no idea what causes them to respond the way they do. And I think Jesus would say it like this, and we've talked about this before. Make sure you always give people mercy and the benefit of the doubt. We're just going to respond differently than the world would. And it, to do that, it takes strength. We can't do it on our own, but when we do, but when we do, folks, wow. Oh, wow. Then we begin to act and respond more and more and more like Jesus. Man. And I think Jesus would say this. He wants us to, to create a culture today of mercy. Create a culture of mercy. Remember in the Beatitude, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst to be more and more like Jesus. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst. Well, it's kind of like mercy. Blessed are those who are merciful. Blessed are those who are hungry and thirsty for mercy to extend mercy. For as they do, they shall receive more. They will receive more mercy. Now, there are some things I know about life. I'm somewhat qualified to say these things because I've lived uh, quite a while now. I've learned some things. I've experienced some things as you have as well. And I've made some mistakes, some doozies. I've tried to make some improvements in other ways in my life. But one of the things I think I've learned is that when I get to the end of my life, I want to have less regret. I want to have less guilt and more mercy and grace in my life. I want to look back and know that I've extended mercy more than I've sought revenge. I want to get to the end of my life and say, Hey, it's been good. It's been good. And that only happens, folks, when I surrender my selfish desires to Jesus. When I become a person of mercy. Because then Jesus gives me more and more and more. And that's the, that's the cool thing about Jesus. That's the coolest thing about Jesus. That's the cool thing about God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's, it's that as we act more and more like God, become more and more like Him, they give us more and more and more. They keep giving. They are God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. They give us more and more and more. Because you know why? They all work in tandem together. Three in one. And how about this? Let's aim to be people of mercy. Let's aim to be people filled with grace. Let's seem to be people who just respond differently than the world around us. 
Let's take that John Stott quote that, uh, that I quoted earlier and let's change it. Let's make sure, let's do our best. Let's ask God to help us be people who no one ever says, well, you're just like everybody else. No, let's be different. Let's be different. Let's be more like Jesus. Let's be more like Jesus. And let's be more like Him. Man, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your mercy. We thank You for Your grace. Man, Lord, we don't deserve any of the things You give us, but we are grateful. We are filled with joy because You have come and changed our lives. Lord, we want to respond differently when the, word, when the world strikes at us. And, and it does. It honestly does quite often. Sometimes, Lord, in subtle ways, sometimes in ways that aren't so subtle. Lord, we don't want to respond the way everybody else responds. We want to respond, Lord, like Jesus has taught us to respond. We want to respond with a grateful life and understand that we have received such mercy on us that we can't help but be merciful back. But Lord, help us on our journey. It won't always be that way on our walk. So Holy Spirit, come and guide us, Lord. Correct us. Keep us close. We thank you and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.
Welcome back. Before we close, I'll go through my usual announcements that I usually do each week, but I always love to do that. Don't forget on Thursday nights at 6.30 p.m. is our Zoom uh, fellowship and Bible study night, 6.30 to about 8 o'clock. It's a good group, a friendly group of people, and every one of you watching right now is invited to join us. We, I'd encourage you to come and join us just to get to know us a little more, get to know me a little more if you want, ask some questions. We're going to, we're right now, we're doing the Book of Romans. And, and uh, I, I think we're in Romans, uh, uh, Romans 9 right now, I believe. So please come and join us. Bring your Bibles, although we're going to put all the scriptures on the screen. They'll be there too. Come with your questions, and I'll be asking questions. If you have any questions at all, we take breaks in between every so often. And just if you have anything at all that we're talking about that you don't understand, let's see if we can help you. Let's see if you can help us. It's, it's a give and take situation. Now, we, we don't have all the answers. That's why we have Bible study, to help each other through this sometimes things that we just don't understand. And we'd love for you to join us. We have people from Canada join us. We have people from all over the, all over the place, in Nevada and everywhere, to come and join us. And if wherever you're watching in the world today, come and join us. The Zoom number will be above my head. Just get the Zoom app. It's free. Okay, on your phone, tablet, or PC, or whatever you're watching it on, your laptop. Get the Zoom app, download it, and it said just punch in the number that's above my head right now. You go into a waiting room. Just wait there a minute or so, actually about 30 seconds, and I'll, I'll admit you. And you come into the room, and I'll introduce myself. You can't mistake me. I'll be there. I'll be sitting here. You'll, you'll know me right away. But as several other friends, I'll introduce you to them all. They're just a great, friendly family. We, and we'd love to have you join us. We would really love to have you join us. So come and join us Thursday evening, 6.30 p.m. on Zoom. Okay? And so that, that's a great thing. Also, don't forget, each Sunday, you're at Central Community Church of God in Hanford, California, 1100 North Reddington Street, 10 a.m. every Sunday. Come down to church and join us here. I know we do it online, and we and encourage that. I also, you know, come. I, I love for you people that are watching online. Encourage your friends, family. If they can't make it here, watch online as well, either on Facebook or YouTube. Our Facebook uh, feed is usually a little bit later. I put on the full thing a little bit later. However, all the links are on Facebook too to get you right to YouTube. Other than that, just go right to YouTube, right to YouTube, Hanford CCC videos. And if you're there, click the notification button or subscribe, because every time you do, every time we have a new service, it'll pop up during the week and remind you that the service is, is ready to come. Other than that, come to church here in Hanford, 10 a.m. every Sunday morning. We've got a great old church here that just you know, can hold up to 250, 300 people, and we'd love for you to come and join us. We're trying to build the church back up to where, it's, where, where it has been. It's been through a couple of tough years, as most churches have, as I'm sure you're well aware. And we're working hard to bring back people just because our goal here more than anything else is just ex just to extend the word of god to people of this community and beyond and that's that's our objective that's our our sole objective nothing more nothing more and we'd love for you to come and worship with us come and sing with us come and pray with us come and share the word with us and just share love with each other the love of god with each other before we go folks uh some prayer requests come up. I, I also want to I keep prayers for for uh, Brother Randy and his family all up in Canada. And pray that they're all doing well. Pray for Pat and Pam, our two blessed saints that are here in town. Uh, I'm gonna, I visited them this week, and so they're such they're such wonderful people to, to just talk to. I just love them both so much, and I want to keep you to keep praying for them. Pray for their situation, and I won't go into detail. Just pray for them. I want to pray for all those that are hurting. For those that have unspoken prayers. Uh, that are watching online right now. We're, we're going to pray for you right now as well. Whatever it is, bring your prayer forward. And as I pray, pray with us. Okay, pray with us. Whoever it is that in your hearts, people that are weighing heavily on your, on, it may be yourself, but for, for other people too, that you just seem to be really hurting. 
let's, we're going to pray together for them all. And so I'd like you to join us in that prayer as we join together. So let's pray. Father Glory, may our church glorify you. Lord, may we accomplish the work you've given us to do and bring many to know you, the only true God, so that they may have eternal life. Lord, thank you for giving your word to us that we may bring it and study it and teach it faithfully and may it be our, our guide for truth and right living. Father, protect and preserve us by your name so that we may be one. Loving Father, we ask for divine healing for all of our friends and those watching online right now who desperately are in need of a miracle. All of those people with unspoken prayers. We thank you. We thank you that healing is provided for the believer through the atonement of your son, Jesus. You are the same yesterday, today, and infinity, and your Holy Spirit is still performing healing and miracles today in and through your body of believers. But Lord, right now, we need a miracle. We need a miracle. May our friends that are hurting, that are suffering, that are in depression, that are just in pain, are angry, may they rise up today and reclaim the full health through all of their bodies. Jehovah Rapha, our great healer, we pray that you will strengthen the faith of our brothers and sisters in your healing power. And may they realize that what they're hoping for is not just a wish, but it is a reality through your promises and your power. And may they put their confidence in you, Lord, who formed the entire universe with just a command. And may their faith reach that next level where they put their full trust in you. May they walk free of all disease and disability. Loving Father, we, recede for, we intercede now for them all who are enduring this great pain and suffering. Help our brothers and sisters be strong in you and in the power of your might. Help them remember that all things are possible for the one who believes in you. And now in the name of Jesus, in the name that above all names we have, Lord, we ask you to take all this pain and suffering away. Heal all disorders or disease or injuries contributing to this pain and bless them with abundant life. Father, we ask for your helping hand and restoring love within our families. We've grown apart because of the challenges we're facing. We, we wish to be united again. Your greatest commandment is love. You are the God of love. And let your love draw us back together. Lord, thank you for allow us, allowing us to come to God. Thank you for always hearing our cries of our hearts. There's, show us how to be faithful to you as you have been to us. And we trust you with all our hearts, our souls, and minds. Because all power, Father, we bow before you because you are awesome and worthy of all the praise. Your word declares that we can do all things through you who strengthen us. We put all our trust in you. You alone are God. You alone are joy. You are our heart and souls. You are the grass under our feet. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that we've spent together learning more about you and just worshiping your name. And as we leave this place this morning, may we be committed to worshiping and serving you in our daily lives. The Lord, show us the ways that we can bless each other in each day. Help us to see you in the monotony of the mundane. Help us to see your blessings around us in the simple, small things that bring us joy each day. And Lord, as we leave this place, as we leave this time online together, please fill us with peace and help us to go forth with joy that can only come for you. Till we meet again, joy. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Folks, thank you for joining us. It's such a blessing to have you all join us this morning. I do look forward to next Sunday when you can join us at 10 a.m. Sunday morning online, Hanford CC's videos, Facebook, or right in through those doors behind that camera there. I've got 1100 North Reddington Street in Hanford, California. Come and join us. Come and say hi to me. I'd love to meet you and I so with the people here at this church. We love you. Have a great and blessed week. Stay warm. It's a little chilly out right now, but uh, stay warm and we'll see you, we'll see you Sunday morning. Bye guys. Bye bye now. God bless.